Georgia Southern Football 98. Brought to you in part by Coca-Cola. Always Coca-Cola. Rozier Ford Lincoln Mercury in Statesboro. The dealership that does business the right way. Bullock Memorial Hospital. The new vision for healthcare in Southeast Georgia. Bubba Burgers. You'll never bite a better burger than a Bubba Burger. And Sea Island Bank. The better way to bank. everybody, welcome to Georgia Southern Football 98, the Paul Johnson Show. I'm Scott Pierce along with Eagles head coach Paul Johnson and the Eagles are on the road this week, the first time this year, up in Chattanooga to play the mocks of UTC and coach on the road. Uh, this is your first experience. Uh, is the team ready to go? Well, I hope so. We had a good week of practice and uh, looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. It's going to be warm. Uh, sun's really out and uh, I think they're expecting temperatures up in the 90s. So. Maybe it'll feel like a home field advantage for us. We're playing in a beautiful new stadium here in Chattanooga, and this has obviously got to be a great place to play when you can go on the road and play in a good facility. Well, it really is a first-class facility, I think, not only the stadium, but the locker rooms and everything involved. Uh, you know, they've really done a good job in putting this together. The Eagles are coming off of a big win last week in their Southern Conference opener. Now we play Chattanooga, and Chattanooga struggled a little bit this year. Well, they've struggled offensively a little bit in the last two games, but I think part of it has been because of who they've played. Uh, you know, they played East Carolina and Troy State, both strong defensive football teams. And, uh, you know, they have a lot of skill, a lot of skill at wide receiver, uh, 16 seniors starting on their football team. and. Defensively, I've been really impressed with them on tape. I mean, they really play hard from start to finish, and you know, they have four or five Division One transfers over on defense, and they're big and can run. Greg Hill coming off his definitely his best game of the season, maybe the best complete game of his career, and uh, he's going to need to bring some of that offense in here today. Right, our offense is going to be tested today. This, without question, is the best defense we've played against all year, and uh, you know, things doesn't change. Uh, what uh, what we have to do is be able to stop them from running the football successfully and establish the run ourselves and get our option game going and take care of the ball. And if we'll do that, then we ought to have a chance to be successful. You came out of the uh, the preseason a little banged up. Now we're four weeks in. Uh, how did, how's the team doing shape-wise? Well, for the most part, we're in pretty good shape. Uh, Daryl Morrell's a little banged up, but he's going to try to play. And uh, other than that, uh, you know, except with the exception of Ryan Haddon, who we've lost probably for the year, uh, everybody should be ready to go. Should be a great game. Don't go away. We'll have a look at the first half highlights of the Eagles versus the mocks of UTC. But first, the Coca-Cola play of the day. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football. We are talking to Coach Paul Johnson. The Eagles are on the road, their first Southern Conference road game this year against UT Chattanooga. The mocks here, a beautiful new field. Coach, you come out, uh, you win the toss, you defer, and the defense really comes out early on in their first uh, defensive possession. They make a statement. Right, they did. I uh, thought we uh, came out the first, uh, you know, the first time they had the ball defensively. We were playing with some excitement and. Uh, Enthusiasm, and we got out and uh, shut them down and made them have to punt the ball to us. When Georgia Southern gets the ball in their first possession, we really see Georgia Southern's one of the bright spots. This year, Adrian Peterson on the first play goes 47 yards for the touchdown. Well, the first play, they lined up in a, in a little stack defense, and we'd worked on it, but not exactly the way they lined up in it. And uh, we were trying to run a load option and probably should have checked out. It, which sent our tackle inside, but uh, they tried to slant down and we blocked down, ended up over blocking and Adrian went untouched for a touchdown. And with that, it was a nice run, a 47 yard run. Georgia Southern leads at that point, seven to nothing. UTC gets the ball back and once again, the defense plays tough, forced them to punt. We get the ball back and not the first play, but soon thereafter, you hit Corey on an 80 yard touchdown pass. Right, uh, I think it was the second play. Uh, uh, we ran a little, uh, change route out there where we had two guys going vertical and Corey in the flats and uh, they actually were in that same option stunt on defense and nobody covered Corey so when he caught the ball he was able to turn up the sideline and 
Evidently picked up a good block from a wide receiver. I couldn't see and, and used his speed to go down the boundary. I'm telling you, like a lightning strike, Georgia Southern up 14 to nothing at that point. UTC still cannot muster much. They're forced to punt on their next possession. Georgia Southern gets the ball back. This time, they force us to drive a little bit, which drive down, and Adrian adds another touchdown. Right, we did a nice job running the option coming down the field. And Greg got several pitches off, and, uh, you know, we had some nice long runs, and it was a good drive. And really, at that point in the game, our offense was executing very well. At the end of the first quarter, Georgia Southern leads 21 to nothing, and your team's really making it look like it's going to be a quick, easy day here in Chattanooga. Well, and it, sometimes that's not as bad. You, you always want to have a great start and get out, but it's hard to maintain that sometimes. And, uh, you know, we... We let that uh, enthusiasm and intensity slide away a little bit. So the end of the first, 21 nothing Georgia Southern, but UTC is driving as the quarter ends. They're going to drive down and continue their possession opening the second quarter. This time they're going to get down uh, into the end zone and score a touchdown, and they used sort of a combination of uh, multiple quarterbacks, two quarterbacks. Right, uh, they were rotating their guys, and the freshman, D'Amato, was really a good scrambler, and I think they feel like the other guy's probably a little better thrower, but uh, disappointing on the play they scored on. Uh, we had an outside blitz called, and they ran a bootleg right into it, and we don't contain. We had a problem containing all day, and the guy was able to roll out and take it in for a school. You had a couple of big injuries early on in the, in the day, a couple of your linebackers, and you had to play some uh, other folks, and uh, that might had to make it a little tough for the defense. Well, it did, and I'm sure it limited what our, our, our package was defensively and what we could call. I thought that, uh, you know, Larry Rogers uh, probably had a day and a half to practice out there. And, Tony Butler had to go out there and play a great deal. And, uh, you know, those guys were put in a situation that, that was tough on them. And at times, they, they might not have gotten in the right spots. But uh, as the ball got closer and closer to our goal line, we found ways to, to bow up and make plays on, on third and fourth down. It's 21 to 7 at that point. Georgia Southern gets the ball back. And this is the first time that we're going to be stopped. They come in on a blitz, and they're able to sack Greg and drop him for a loss, and we're forced to punt. Right. We're trying to throw some play action off the option. and. We made a missed call on the offensive line and didn't get our guard out in time to pick up the edge rusher, and they came up with a nice set. UTC uh, can move the ball a little, but they are forced to punt on their next possession. But Georgia Southern answers, and you drive down the field, and Greg Hill is going to uh, add uh, some big runs, and then Adrian Peterson once again, another touchdown. Right. Uh, you know, once again, we had the option game going a little bit and, and, and drove the ball down, and when we got down in there, we were able to punch it in. Uh, on a little speed option to Adrian, a little pitch play. 28 to 7, Georgia Southern. Looks like it's going to be a nice, easy day, but UTC was going to have none of that. They're going to drive down as the half is nearing an end, and they're going to add a field goal to make it 28 to 10, and you're sort of seeing at that point that you may have your day cut out for you. Well, really, they didn't have to drive down because our kickoff team let them return the dang kickoff all the way down to our 25-yard line again. And, you know, every week it's like a broken record. We're talking about special teams and, and giving up big plays, and we have got to get that fixed, and evidently it's going to take some personnel changes to do it. It's been a, you know, Georgia Southern special teams have sort of been sort of legendary around these parts, and to hear that you're a little frustrated is sort of different for people to hear. Well, we, we are frustrated. I'm very frustrated with it. Uh, you know, certain aspects of them have been, Okay, but uh, we've got a couple of special teams that we just got to get a better better play out of. Georgia Southern still with a nice lead, though, going into the locker room. The score is 28 to 10, Georgia Southern leading. And for the most part, the Eagles have played very good ball, but you do sort of shift a little bit of a momentum change. We'll see how the second half unfolds. But first, at halftime segment, we'll be with the groundskeeper, stadium supervisor at Georgia Southern. We'll be back. He's the master of all he surveys. Well, at least if it's green. Roger Inman is the stadium supervisor for Georgia Southern, and he's the man responsible for making Allen E. Paulson Stadium one of the nicest playing environments in the country. From shrubberies to uh, little flowers to marigolds, uh, we have quite a few people in the community that help us with it to make this place the elite showpiece it is. 
as it was once coined by Coach Russ at the prettiest little stadium in Georgia. To say Roger has a green thumb, well, that'd be an understatement. You see, he does a lot more than just cut the grass. He and his crew have to keep all of the university's playing fields in tip-top shape. The three of us, or the four of us, maintain right at uh, 111 acres. We've got four and a half football fields to keep cut, lined, painted, and that's not counting uh, the confines of Alan E. Paulson Stadium and Glen Bright Field. And even after the last player leaves the field and the last fan leaves the stadium, Roger Inman's work is just beginning. But as soon as Coach Johnston finished, whether it be a scrimmage or a practice, uh, we'll be out on lawnmowers and cut the grass, get it ready. We'll put a heavy coat of ammonium nitrate, ammonium sulfate on it, and water it in real well and try to make it grow as fast as we can to get ready for the next contest. And all of this hard work definitely pays off. This field has stood the test of harsh weather environments, whether it be eight inches of rain from Hurricane Hugo or sub-freezing temperatures in the 1989 National Championship game. Glen Bryant Field is just as nice as any other field in the country. When you look at some of the pro fields, this field will stand right in with them. There's no debate about that. Uh, in 95, Paul Massey uh, rebuilt this field for us from scratch. Uh, this particular surface is only three years old, and it's, it's ready for many, many years to come of abuse and wear and tear. Georgia Southern has the privilege of playing on another nice field, the new one here in Chattanooga. Let's see how the Eagles fare in the second half. We'll have highlights right after this. And uh, we're four and uh, two Southern Conference wins. Uh, we just need to continue to work hard so we could uh, play four quarters of football and really uh, light up the scoreboard. It was just a good play call by the coach, the strong safety blitz, and then they tried to have the uh, free safety come over the top. Audrell, after I caught Audrell, blocked this man, and Dedrick blocked this man. And really, I didn't do anything but run with the ball. I mean, that's easy to do. Those guys 40 and 50 yards downfield blocking, that's the hardest thing to do. Well, you know, it's great to have a win. You know, our defense didn't do what it was supposed to do, actually. We were on the field uh, pretty much for ourselves. You know, we, uh, we messed up ourselves, so we stayed on the field a lot. Our goals is to win the Southern Conference and then to win the National. I mean, that's our goals. And anything less than that, we didn't make our goals. Welcome back to the second half of Georgia Southern versus the Mocks of UT Chattanooga. We are on the road in Chattanooga. Georgia Southern comes out of the locker room 28 to 10. And what'd you tell your guys at halftime, Coach? Well, we talked before the game about having to play for 60 minutes and play with intensity and focus. And we talked about getting the ball first and taking it in and, and trying to drive for a score and setting the tone. And you know, to their credit, they came out there in the in the second half and really stoned us on that first series. The Mox came out and played some tough defense. Georgia Southern could not move the ball on their first possession. They're forced to punt. UTC gets the ball and they drive down the field. Don't get in the end zone, but they do add a field goal, and that's going to make it 28 to 13, and they're beginning to close the gap a little bit. Right. Uh, it was big. They had a nice drive to get down the field, and at least our, our defense, it was good that we uh, bowed up and, and didn't let them in the end zone and held them to, uh, to three points. Georgia Southern gets the ball back, and again, not able to move the ball in your next possession. Were you trying to do anything different, or what was happening? Uh, they changed the defense just a little bit in the second half. They were, they were really just playing a 50-shade defense, and they were rolling their secondary, and we were getting the place check to the right side. We were trying to run some load option, but we missed a couple of reads, and when we missed the reads, we got behind. And we weren't able, I think both times, we came up like a half a yard or a yard short for first downs on third down. Georgia Southern is forced to punt. UTC gets the ball back, drive down the field. The defense stops and forced them to try a 47-yarder. But we had some good pressure, and I think their holder decided we better not try the kick. Well, yeah, and he bobbled the snap. When he, when he got it, he didn't field it cleanly. And then he tried to pick it up and, and throw. And it seemed like it took us forever to get him down. And, they threw the ball down when their tight ends caught it, which was really unbelievable. I'm yelling at the officials. They had to have linemen down the field. And, but uh, we got him tackled before he got to the first down marker and got the ball back. Georgia Southern with the ball back is going to take it in again, not moving it. Three possessions in the third quarter and not able to really get but one first down, only 34 yards. Right. Uh, very disappointed to come out in the second half. And, and basically, uh, they had not changed a, a whole lot of things. Uh, you know, we just, we, when we missed a read or two, we got ourselves behind. 
and uh, it was like we were missing a key block or a key something on, on, on every play. It was disappointing. At the start of the fourth quarter, Georgia Southern's defense is going to come up big, and they're going to force on a fourth down attempt the UTC to try. It's going to be incomplete. Georgia Southern gets the ball back, not able to move the ball again. We're forced to punt, and then the mocks are going to capitalize. They're going to come down and score another touchdown. Right. Uh, we uh, When we got the ball back, we, we try to We'll sprint out pass play, and uh, Greg threw it high, and Dedrick couldn't pull it down. And we had to punt it back to them, and to their credit, they were able to drive it down and uh, and get in the end zone. A big miss extra point, though, for the Mox makes it 28-19 to Georgia Southern. But the Eagles are going to answer now. Driving down the field, Adrian Peterson adds a nice 26-yard touchdown run. Right. Uh, it was good to see Adrian uh, break through on the option. Uh, we changed up formations a little bit and went into a heavy set, and... Uh, uh, you know, had, Greg had a nice run on the quarterback sweep, and then uh, Adrian broke it on the on the give part of the option. That makes it 35 to 19, Georgia Southern. UTC is going to move down the field, add a touchdown. This time they try to go for two, and it's no good. Right. Uh, you know, they uh, tried to throw the same little corner route, and, and the guy overthrew in the corner, which. Uh, was uh, at that point in the game, they were still two scores behind, so uh, you know, really helped us a little bit. It was getting late in the game at this point. Georgia Southern is going to add one more touchdown. Sherrard Freeman, the nice touchdown run that makes it 42 to 25. We cover the onside kicks, coach, and you're able to get out with a win, right? Uh, anytime you go on the road in the conference and uh, can get away with a win, you, you need to be happy. I think that. Uh, we know we can play better than we played today. We did some good things. We didn't turn the ball over on offense. Uh, you know, we cut down our penalties offensively, and we did some good things that way. But there's still a lot of stuff we have to work on. Big Southern Conference win on the road. Georgia Southern beats the mocks of UTC. Don't go away. We'll have a preview of next week's game against VMI right after this. Welcome back. The Eagles, big winners on the road today. 2-0 in the Southern Conference, 4-0 on the season as they meet, beat the Mocs from Chattanooga. And, Coach, next week you're at home, another Southern Conference opponent, VMI. Right. Uh, VMI comes in. They were playing Farmer today. I don't know how they did. Uh, we've got to get our guys ready for that game. It's, uh, it's a typical uh, game that uh, we're coming back from off the road. And, you know, uh, even though they got a win early in the year, it's, it's a team that's not in the upper level of our conference. And we went up there to play them last year and, and wasn't ready to play and really struggled in the first half. I think, uh, you know, we were up at halftime only 14 to nothing and, and really had done that on a freak play when about three guys had batted it. And we've got to, to go back and clean up our mistakes and get ready to play VMI. Greg Hill had a big game last year against uh, VMI. This year, uh, he's had some good games and your quarterback seems to be performing for you. Well, I think he's doing what it takes to move for us to move the ball. He's uh, he had not had a great game rushing the football yet, but everybody's coming to take him. And, uh, you know, it's why Adrian's opened up so much and we've had so many pitch plays this year, big ones. Uh, you know, it's a credit to Greg and he's doing a good job by dishing the ball around. You also have to go back and assess your defense, uh, losing a couple of linebackers early on and you start sort of banged up going into the game. Well, we'll have to find out the status of Daryl Morrell. I think we knew Daryl was banged up a little bit going in with his neck and I'm sure, you know, hopefully we'll get him back if not next week, maybe the following week. Dante's may be a little more serious with a knee. You know, we'll just have to go back and have it evaluated and, uh, and see where we stand. So far, to be 4-0 on the season, what kind of added pressures uh, does this put on you, or is it just a good place to be? Well, I think it's where we want to be. Uh, we've only played four games, and that's where we'd like to be. I told our guys after the game, uh, you know, this team has a chance to be special if we'll keep working and get better. And uh, what we got to do is come back to work on Monday and start working to try to get uh, to be 5-0. All right, we'll see how it goes. Don't go away because Georgia Southern football just rolls on this year at home in Statesboro against VMI. Thanks for joining us. For Coach Paul Johnson, I'm Scott Pierce. We'll see you after next week's game. Southern Football 98. Brought to you in part by Coca-Cola. Always Coca-Cola. Rozier Ford Lincoln Mercury in Statesboro. The dealership that does business the right way. Bullock Memorial Hospital. The new vision for healthcare in Southeast Georgia. Bubba Burgers. You'll never bite a better burger than a Bubba Burger. And Sea Island Bank. The better way to bank.